what's up guys so apparently we got a little bit too much attention I had made some videos on the VAERS data right that's publicly available to anyone anyone can download VAERS data all you have to do is basically sign a disclaimer saying that there's you know the government who administers this database by the way you know dot gov hhs.gov you gotta sign, you know, not sign, but you know, click through and accept a waiver or disclaimer saying that anyone could post anything, you know, that kind of bullshit, right? Well, I've made several of those VAERS videos now, but apparently the January one really made him mad. In the January video, I had started just running through the data and at the time it had been like what January 15th so like 15 days or something into January and the data shows that in the first 15 days of this year 2022 January there was already 5,000 adverse events reported specifically related to the COVID-19 you know jabs Right? And it's just a very, uh, it's a very unsettling idea that in 15 days, there's already 5,000 adverse events with the rollout of the boosters and related to COVID, so called vaccines, etc. And then to make matters worse, you know, YouTube takes it upon themselves to come out and shut down my freedom of speech, right? And to go after my speech. And so they did that. They shut down my video and they gave me a strike. I appealed it immediately, of course. And the appeal went nowhere. They basically said they're maintaining their position that my video violated the miss conduct or misinformation guidelines that they have set specifically related to COVID-19 which is laughable because all I did was report government data right so like let's step back and let's think about another form of information that government reports right like crime statistics right at the federal you know FBI level they report crime data. That's where you see people getting information about, you know, gunshot victims and whether it's black people getting shot by white people or white people getting shot by black people, you know, white cops shooting black suspects. You know, all that information is derived from federally maintained databases. So someone who like, you know, downloads that data for crime statistics in like 2019 or something like that you know they're not engaging in misinformation or misconduct if all they're doing is reporting data so you know i think that's bullshit that youtube comes out here and you know appoints themselves you know some unelected arbiter of what is misinformation or not when people like me all i'm doing is literally reporting the data and so to me, it speaks of several things. Number one, that their story can't stand on its own. The story that they're pushing, quite literally, is so flimsy that all it takes is someone like me to come out there and just report on their own data, their own information. And quickly, they've got to shut down so-and-so's speech or so-and-so's ability to make a, you know, a, uh, a presentation based off of readily available data to anyone. So let's think about another direction, right? Like Texas, where I live, we have DPS. And I'm fairly certain that they report on the number of collisions, you know, at a state level at like this intersection or something, you know. Here I am in Frisco, Texas, headed southbound on Coit, 
and that highway that you see right there is a uh, uh, toll road, Sam Rayburn Tollway 121, right? Sam Rayburn Tollway 121. And so I'm sure that there's all kinds of Texas Department of Public Safety, you know, TexDOT, Department of Transportation, Texas DPS, Department of Public Safety, information and crash statistics related to intersections that are hot, you know, highways and on and off ramps all over the state. And, and I'm sure the, uh, the federal counterpart to that agency also, likewise, has that type of statistical data readily available for insurance companies, for auto manufacturers, you know, road designers and engineering firms that are interested in what specific designs or intersection types have a higher crash rate. But here we are. In 2022, reporting on VAERS Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System data that's aggregated and maintained at the federal level by the Department of Homeland Security, I'm sorry, the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department, you know, the, the uh, you know, .gov, right? So this is federally maintained data. And for me, the fact that my data got shot down, my presentation of their own data, you know, back to the car analogy, speaks to the idea that, wow, maybe there are a lot of car wrecks on that highway. Or, wow, maybe the engineering design of this road, you know, in the grade or something, really isn't very safe. The type of concrete used, the type of lights or you know the type of mergers and traffic or something it's not safe you know what i mean like why would they go and shut that down and if, if their own story is true right like they say no one gets hurt or damaged from vaccines then then that i don't know it just it just it's frustrating but at the same time it's also vindicating you know it's like oh wow someone must have hit a nerve right here we are at the gas station. I need to get some gas in this bike before World War III starts. But yeah. Um, uh, before World War III starts. What, a, what an idea, right? So yeah, we got regulated. I got um, shut down. My videos got... I got a strike on my account. And I got... Uh, my, my, my video pulled and I made another video, a follow-up video, where I had further analyzed specific trends in the data that's um, very, that, 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 in my opinion, from a data analyst standpoint, tell me that at some level there appears to be a little bit of malfeasance in, at play here where I believe that the way that they present certain data sets, certain ideas, certain, um, shit, that sucks. Certain, like, groupings of data together really make it kind of impossible for the average non-data analyst person to go and look up, verify, confirm, you know, certain certain issues related to vaccines. So like, you know, one of the things I was saying in the follow-up video, which was data malfeasance by design detected, you know, I found it inside theirs. The reason why I made that video, and it's obvious why they banned it, is because let's say you find yourself having symptoms well, you have to then create a preponderance of evidence to go after into the, you know, the uh, vaccine damage court, as they call it, or the, uh,
you know the vaccine side court it's a, it's a separate court system specifically for vaccines it's a no-fault court system for vaccine manufacturers so that they are not you know held uh, legally liable for the damages people report that they have it's a no-fault system right and so you basically get like upwards of two hundred thousand dollars if you can prove that you've been damaged by said vaccine so that second video that got pulled down which actually got me the strike was also considered medical misinformation related to COVID-19 and okay sure whatever but it's your data guys you know it's not like I spoke to James and James spoke to Bob and his uncle said that you know he had some kind of gnarly infection related to his vaccine that wasn't the case my data was you know the, the shit that I presented in my video was their own data so you know troubling to say the least in my opinion but here we are you know 2022 it's January 28th or 29th I think it's 29th we're at the end of this son of a bitch of January and already they're trying to shut people's speech down and no surprise you know they they remove videos i think some of the joe rogan um dr malone peter mcculloch videos have been pulled from certain uh platforms and social media organizations where you're not allowed to post it not allowed to pro certain videos like you probably can't go and post the uh the malone video on youtube i mean on facebook you probably can't do that you probably can't do that on twitter or instagram you know what i mean like the system is in full swing with their concerted effort to silence and chill speech related to the covid situation and it's interesting because as we're approaching this era and this time certain countries like the uk and some others are relaxing their restrictions today's the day of the big uh trucker rally in the canadian capital right so you know a, a lot of this stuff is coming to the head with the covid situation and then of course, the Supreme Court shut down the damn COVID uh, mandates here in America for private employers and private employees. However, they upheld the idea that it's uh, it's perfectly within the federal government's purview using OSHA as a as a weapon to then go after uh, organizations that are federally funded, like uh, hospitals or care provider situations. I'm, I'm presuming that means a VA and whatever, you know that they they are within their rights to have a mandate that the OSHA has a right to force federal employees and it's just a damn shame for those federal employees it's like well shit now it's time to go private right and so what I'm getting at is like man they're really trying hard right now you know they're shutting down people like me they're shutting down people like Rogan and shutting down people like Malone and McCulloch you know doctors and lawyers and just scientists i mean it's it's a big deal man like we are really on the edge of something big here and, and that's kind of why i'm here to talk to you right now is guys it appears like the new world order is abandoning the systematic approach to shut down certain aspects of covid you know with the restrictions it appears that the go the globalists are pivoting away from covid right now as we approach this situation of russia as we approach the situation in Ukraine. So, you know, I think war is inevitable for the most part. I think World War III is definitely going to happen here. And the reason why I say that is because we have certain political leaders like Putin and Biden who are engaged in a dick dance. And I seriously doubt that Biden's going to back down and you know quite honestly it's not like it's to him it's the people running him you know weekend at bernie's weekend at biden's right those are the people who are pulling the strings the people who are running his administration whether it's obama 
or whatever you know like i really just don't think that they're going to back down and we will definitely head to war because most of the initiatives like build back better um vaccine mandate a lot of the biden shit has stalled the the filibuster reform and a lot of just the supreme court striking down the mandate you know like there's a lot of shit that biden and his handlers have tried to pull and has fallen flat on his face and so what do they do at the end of the day when they when all else fails take them to war but i just want to say recently in the last week there's been talk about omicron what is it a b a new substrain then there's like stealth omicron i'm not sure those are the same things and then there's neo cove which is china reported and and a lot of people who i've talked to about that neo cove russia reported story out of china supposedly say that that's a misinformation psyop and they're saying that that's an attempt to drive a wedge between russia and china and you know to be perfectly honest i think that's not a bad idea honestly i think instead of trying to go after russia and solidifying their relationship with china that we should be trying to drive a wedge between russia and china somehow however that's not possible i just i really highly doubt that we would be successful in our attempts to separate russia and china alliance somehow But here we are at the end of January in 2022, and it appears the globalists are abandoning the COVID idea and they're um, going hard into a different direction, like either a war or an economic collapse. Either way, they win, you know. I just, I'm very concerned about the truckers in, in Canada. I feel that they will be false flagged just like we were in January 6th with, you know, Nazi and Antifa, FBI provocateuring, you know, Ray Epps, all that kind of stuff, right? Riley Williams, who's, a, you know, the Heil Hitler Nazi girl who took Pelosi's laptop. You know, that chick still hasn't been sentenced. Uh, and there's other Nazis like Matthew Heimbach and Tankersley, a lot of people associated with um the neo-nazi or national socialist party movements you know whatever you want to call yourselves these days guys uh white supremacist groups or something like that there's a lot of uh people related to january 6th that never got sentenced and so that's come to light with you know encapsulating the idea with ray ups you know uh senator cruz questions Deputy Secretary of the FBI, or whatever she was, department. And she was not able to provide an answer to Mr. Cruz about who Ray Epps was and if he was a federal informant, which means they're doing that thing again where they hide behind an investigation to say we can't discuss details pertaining to an open investigation, which we all know is bullshit. So, be on the lookout, guys. I believe World War II, uh, three, four, whatever you want to call it, I'm pretty sure it's World War Four at this point, is on the horizon, and it's very, very uh, unsettling for us because here we are, just the average people, going to get screwed over in this situation. So everybody needs to be really careful and be on their guard. because things could change quickly. And if we're not prepared mentally, spiritually, and physically, and financially, you're gonna get screwed. And so if you have a lot of money in the financial system, like banks, if you have a lot of money tied up in crypto, and stocks, and 401ks, I mean, what are you gonna do when, like, we're all of a sudden without a grid here in America, dude? Like, where's all that, what is all that money in the bank gonna do for you, man? If we end up in a Weimar situation where they, I don't know, overinflate, you know, hyperinflate the dollar, what the hell are you going to do with it? I'm just really concerned, man. There's a lot going on. There's a lot on my mind that I want to get out, but it's just, you know, what do you do? Anyways, guys, I need to wrap it up. Headed home right now. I need to gas up this bike. Make sure she's topped off before World War III kicks off this weekend. Um, 
Went and filled up my wife's car, filled up my bike. Gonna go buy some gasoline container, five gallon containers, and fill those bad boys up with gas just so I have enough money for the bike, or enough gas for the bike to keep it running. Alright guys, that's all I got for this video, man. A lot of shit going down. You guys need to be careful, be safe, stay alert. And to be honest, I was a little demoralized after I got that strike and two of my videos pulled down, so I need to get back on it. I can't let them, I can't let them, you know, shut my shit down and that be it. We're gonna have to find another venue to post our shit on. So y'all take it easy, guys. Be safe, fight the power.